Hello everyone, I am Sammy, your devoted manga otaku, and welcome to my manga space. Today, I will be hauling and unboxing books for the month of April. Almost every manga in this haul is a continuation of a series that I've rated five stars, and I'm just so happy and eager to haul these books. <laughs> As per the norm, the first part of this video is dedicated to unboxing all the manga, and the second part of this video will be me discussing the books in further detail. These videos usually are on the longer side, but I have included lots of timestamps, so feel free to jump around. And with that, I invite you to grab a coffee or other beverage of your choice, and let's unbox some manga. <laughs>
the unboxing portion of this video, and without skipping a beat, let's haul some manga. The first pre-order I want to talk about is the finale of a series that actually ranked in my top 10 manga for 2021, and that's volume 12 of the Age Gap Romance Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight by Rin Nikimoto. I'm not sure why Kodansha waited to release this volume, but I have been waiting patiently for this book for over a year, and I'm ecstatic to finally be holding the ending of this extraordinary shoujo series in my hands. <laughs> if you're unaware, this Cinderella type story follows two characters who aren't what they seem to be. Hinana is an honor student who, secret who secretly dreams of a fairy tale romance, while Kaede, who is a famous actor, has a personality that doesn't quite fit his princely image. <laughs> the manga centers around the endearing romance between this quirky couple, while also sharing meaningful and dramatic stories about family and friendship. I'll probably wait to read this book until I've reread the series. It's been so long since I've picked this story up, and I want to refresh my memory before jumping into this finale. The second manga I'm hauling today is volume 3 of the ongoing romantic comedy Skip and Loafer by Masaki Takamatsu. I know very little about this Seven Seas publication. I know that it follows a country girl who moves to Tokyo and that it has amazing reviews. I also adore the covers of the series. Let me just grab the other covers or the other volumes so that you can see all the covers together. As you can see, the covers are adorable. <laughs> and also, I love the spines. I think the colors are so pretty. I just love the aesthetic and I love how each cover features a different season and a different flower. I'm pretty sure volume four has a winter theme and it has like a holly vibe to it. Now that I have the first three installments, I think it's time to test this series out and see what all the hype is about. Up next, we have volume seven of the Viz Media comedy, The Way of the House Husband by Kosuke, Kosuke Ono. This seinen series is a riot. <laughs> it follows the adventures of a former Yakuza boss named Tatsu, who ends up leaving the life of crime to marry and become a house husband. The gag throughout the series is that Tatsu approaches his house husband chores and tasks with the same intensity and dedication as a gangster. I'm shocked that Ono Sensei has kept this episodic series fresh and laugh out loud hilarious despite it telling the same joke over and over again. The art is incredible, the humor is everything. I'm really curious to see what new challenges Tatsu will face in this new installment. And then we have a pre-order that I've been really looking forward to reading, and that's Volume 7 of the action-packed comedy Spy Family by Tetsuya Endo. This Viz Media publication follows a master spy who must create a fake, a fake family in order to infiltrate a prestigious academy and get closer to his target. As luck would have it, he's able to find a suitable wife and adopt a child, However, they have secrets of their own. His new bride is actually a deadly assassin, and his adorable daughter can read minds. This is another series that made my top 10 manga of 2021. It's been months since I read volume 6 of Spy Family, and that installment sort of ended on a cliffhanger, so I'm very eager to get to this. The art in this manga is phenomenal. It has both shoujo and shonen elements, which is why I feel comfortable recommending this to anyone, no matter their tastes. 10 out of 10, would recommend you check this out if you haven't already. This next manga is actually the finale to a four volume series I've been collecting for a while now, and that's volume four of Starcrossed by Junko. This supernatural romance follows a girl who's a huge fan of an idol group, and while attending their concert, she accidentally dies after failing to save her favorite member of this group. After a bizarre turn of events, both the girl and her idol are sent back to Earth, but their bodies have been 
swapped. I haven't read many body swapping manga before, but the ones I have read were hilarious, so I'm hoping to get some laughs out of this series. I have heard some mixed reviews, but I'm overall excited to give this Kodansha shoujo a shot now that I have the entire series. And then we have a manga that I actually unboxed and read a couple weeks ago, and that's volume 3 of my love mix-up story by Wataru Hinakure and art by Aruko. I talked about this manga in my last manga wrap-up. I'll leave a card on the screen and link in the description if you want to learn more, but essentially I'm really loving this series. The story is adorable and funny, the characters are relatable, and there's great bisexual representation in this, which I feel isn't explored much in manga. I love Aruko Sensei's art style and these watercolor covers are gorgeous. <laughs> I feel like Viz has been killing it with their new shoujo titles lately. Up next is another pre-order that Kodansha decided to hold off releasing, and that's volume 7 of the Jose series, Something's Wrong With Us by Natsumi Ando. I'm not sure why it's taken so long to release this next installment, but I'm very thankful to have it now, and it looks like future volumes will be releasing more frequently, which is amazing. <laughs> this murder mystery follows a professional Japanese sweets maker named Sakura, whose mother was accused of murdering the owner of a celebrated wagashi shop and passed away suddenly before the trial. Fifteen years later, Sakura is determined to prove her mother's innocence, even if it means returning to that very shop in order to gather evidence and get close to the man she believes framed her mother. I'm a little foggy on the details of Volume 6, so I might have to reread that to jog my memory, but I'm so excited to see what new twists and reveals await our lead characters. Now, if you're new to my channel, you might not know that my favorite yaoi of 2021 was the smut-filled masterpiece, Dick Fight Island by Raven Ike, and today I have the honor of hauling the second installment of this Sublime series. The title of this yaoi is fa fairly self-explanatory. The manga follows a group of men who are engaging in a battle of endurance with their dicks. <laughs> and the last man to climax claims the title of king. If you want to hear my spoiler-free review on volume 1, I recommend you check out my August wrap-up video. But basically, this yaoi exceeded all my expectations. It was entertaining, the characters were unique, the world building was thorough, and despite its bizarre premise, the story has a lot of sweet and endearing moments. Now, I've actually already read this volume. I read it very recently. I was visiting my best friend last week and we both had a copy and we were just cackling the whole way through. I wasn't sure how the mangaka was going to continue the story since the tournament concluded in volume one, but this was a solid sequel and I was not disappointed. I'm super glad I got to experience this alongside my bestie and I look forward to talking about this in my monthly wrap-up. This next pre-order is part of a Kodansha publication that debuted fairly recently and is a series that I instantly fell in love with. You could say I'm a little lovesick. <laughs> and that's volume 3 of Lovesick Ellie by Fujimomo. This hilarious romantic comedy follows a high schooler named Eriko who's sort of a perv. <laughs> she posts these outrageous fantasies about her crush, a boy named Omi, on her secret Twitter account under the pseudonym Lovesick Ellie. But one day, Eriko learns that Omi is secretly two-faced, and Omi discovers Eriko's bizarre Twitter account. The two agree to keep each other's secrets and slowly begin embracing each other's quirks. This is a very wholesome and fluffy story with adorable and relatable characters. 
It has lighthearted moments and side-splitting humor. Also, the artwork is very cute. I love the covers. I love the spines. I definitely recommend you pick this up if you love rom-com shoujo. I myself can't wait to continue this story. The second last manga I'm hauling today is Volume 5 of the Yen Press series, Mint Chocolate by Mami Orikasa. I explained this in my March manga wrap-up video, but this manga has been growing on me. Each volume is better than the last, and I actually ended up rating the fourth volume five stars. I was very impressed by the story progression and the character development. The manga itself centers around two high schoolers, Nanami and Kyohei, who both have hidden feelings for each other, but unexpectedly, they learn that their parents are getting married. What follows is a taboo romance between step-siblings who are trying to navigate their romantic feelings for each other while living under the same roof. I'm really, really looking forward to reading this, and I hope this series continues to impress me. And of course, I had to save the best for last, and that's volume 10 of the incredible Kodansha story, Living Room Matsunaga-san by Keiko Iwashita. If you've been following my channel for any length of time, you probably know that this manga is one of my new favorite shoujo, and I'm a little sad because this is the second last volume of this series. I haven't decided if I'm going to read this right away or wait until the final volume comes out. A part of me wants to do a reading vlog video for the last two volumes of this series, so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. For those that haven't read this series, this manga centers around an age gap romance between a graphic designer named Jun Matsunaga and a high school girl named Miko. The two live under the same roof in Miko's uncle's boarding house along with four other roommates and you watch as Miko befriends these working adults while also discovering her independence. It's hard to describe how this manga makes me feel, but I almost always happy cry when reading the latest volume. I'm just so invested in the characters and the relationships. It's all just very special to me. If you haven't checked this out yet, I 110% recommend that you pick up the first two volumes and give it a solid try. If you like rom-coms that focus on communication and feature really endearing friendships and relationships, I'm positive you will enjoy this. Also, June is like the hottest manga boy ever. Like, look at him. How could you not? <laughs> and that, friends, is the end of my April manga unboxing and haul video. I'd love to know what pre-orders you've been eager to haul recently, so let me know in the comment section below. If you're interested in watching more videos from me, you can check out my end card where I'll have links to my most recent videos. I hope you all have a magnificent day, and I'll see you in my next